Welcome back, all you fabricants and fleshbacks, to the super, not, funny show, Reviews. I am Molde Poupe, your resident fabricant and comedy extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And today we're going to be reviewing the 12th episode of Debris, coming to you from NBC and streaming on Peacock and on Hulu. So, was this good? Was it bad? And should you be watching? Stick around because I have opinions. Debris, episode 12, entitled A Message from Ground Control, um, which I think applies uh, to, if you've been watching the credits of this show, you will notice that there's a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of radio t- chatter about, I, I'm supposing they're, you know, when they were first locking down on some of the first pieces of debris and all that stuff. I imagine that's what that's about. This show is really bad about connecting the, uh, most of the titles to what it, what the hell's going on in the actual show. That said, uh, it starts off with uh, George Jones. He makes it to George Jones. He makes it to uh, you know some shuttered facility or something like that because he's still trying to figure out how to look for uh, this piece of debris that Influx wants. And as it turns out, there's a perfect place that uh, has been shuttered, but somehow still has power. I don't know. Um, and it, he's going to use it to you know detect magnetic anomalies because there's some kind of special bullshit science interaction that hey don't ask too many questions it's just happening there's a way he can do it with uh, this particular facility and he's going to do that uh, Brian and Fanola they I'm I guess they drove across country to come you know come to Virginia or something like that uh, something like that it's in Virginia they were on the West Coast last time but they drive up and just as they do. As they're going to go help him, you know, with his, his whole little project, they get called away on a major debris situation. Because uh, at the start of the episode, we saw that uh, someone who we, you know, an extra that we saw in a previous episode who handed off a piece of debris to um, to the director of Orbital, uh, well, he gets murdered. <laughs> Can we call it murdering? Uh, he gets killed accidentally by a piece of debris, debris that just shoots across um, you know, just shoots across the 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 whole warehouse and joins its uh, you know its neighbors on um, the partially reconstructed ship, and he just unhappily has his face right in the way of where that thing is going to go, and that starts a whole little lockdown of the whole um, of the entire warehouse situation, and a debris event begins. What's it all about? It's a mystery because everything is in the dark, and once they get there. They get the bright idea. You know what? I remember I was saying earlier in the in the season, um, you know, Fanola and Brian just randomly decide, oh, we who needs one of these damn you know hazmat suits? We'll be fine. We just walk around in whatever the hell radiation this is. Well, they're smarter this time. They make sure they put on the damn hazmat suits this time, and they go into the facility. And what they find is a bunch of spaced out you know in a trance uh, technicians and. Uh, some damn debris that's moving around that's in the little protective boxes and they keep getting shot into this weird little wormhole thingy and shot out the other end all broke up uh, broke up <laughs> um so you know all, all of that all that's what's going on that's the mystery the mystery box and you know what um you know they they have no idea what's what's going on this is literally one of those first times i've seen in the whole show where Fanola's like well, i don't know <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what's going on. This we're trying everything. We're everything. Yes, there's clearly Ligaris and radiation and blah blah. blah all the bullshit science, but no clue what's going on. Then she gets the bright idea to you know call her dad, and that's like, um, you know, you couldn't stop it before with the little, uh, you know, with the little dampening field. Just reverse the polarity, I guess, and you know that works. But it has unfortunate side effects of of you know kind of killing you know, kind of killing people who are exposed to this particular uh, phenomenon. But it's clear that whatever is happening, someone or something is sorting out bits of debris trying to construct something. And is that good or bad? Uh, probably bad. I don't know. Probably. Um, it does lead for, you know, it leads them to sort of, you know, l- leads them down to what they find out is a a weapons testing basement, um, wherein it it seems that Orbital is trying to weaponize some of the debris, and at least to a confrontation between Maddox and um, 
and Finola, in which she accuses him of doing all this for, you know, possibly nefarious reasons. He, of course, says, you know, we got to protect yourself. Other people are doing it. You know, it's all about our interests and our allies' interests. And, oh, oh, by the way, the British are doing it, too, you know, because that's that's a great argument, I, I guess, uh, or not. Um, but Finola does come back and say, hey, you know, my dad, he killed himself you know, to, because this, this shit was happening, you know, you're not supposed, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, it's not okay. And, you know, the rebuttal is of, you know, your dad's, you know, dad and people like them are like bits of debris. They're bad in the hands of the wrong people. And that's why we got to find them. So Maddox literally, Maddox literally lies to her face more or less, um, because she's supposed to think that her dad's still alive. And he's supposed to think that she, uh, you know, he's supposed to think that, you know, she's, you know, she, thinks that he's alive and that well or whatever um and that he doesn't know about it it's it's you know it's just more of a, a confirmation i guess to finola about the sort of relationship and why she can't trust this guy um as the episode you know goes on that it, you know there's a couple of people a couple of the technicians die and it's because of the harmonic resonance again bullshit science don't just don't worry about it it's happening so people die so that, you know, we have some stakes. And then Brian, oddly enough, has, um, he has a, another experience where he has a vision of the woman who died in the previous episode that was going to give him a message, I'm presuming from the debris. I, is the debris or the ship or whatever, is it sentient? We don't know yet. It's, it's very indeterminate. But it leads him to have a revelation about the fact that they should just get out of the way of this debris event and let it just happen. Otherwise, people are going to die. And um, maybe, it's, in, in his, as his words, I just have faith that it's going to be all right, uh, which is, uh, in a, you know, and he says to the person who has faith, you know, who's supposed, who was talking about faith early on in the episode, you know, in that first early episode, that she's not having faith, she's being afraid and everything, and that she should just trust him and let it go, even though he's acting out of character. Um. To which I sort of roll my eyes because, man, is this a situation where, oh, well, you know, just got to have blind faith in things that you can't have, you can't really, you know, prove or anything like that. Is that the way a scientific organization is supposed to be operating? Is that the way a scientific, you know, a science and reason and technology based, um, you know, organizations should be conducting their business? I, don't, I, I feel like that not. Maybe let's have some evidence or something like that. Have a have a better idea, a better hypothesis than it feels good right here. Come on, uh, this we're getting to some stuff that I did not like about this show earlier on. Uh, what I had to roll my eyes at it. That said, of course, uh, the way this whole show seems to work, you know, if you just believe every time they just believe every time they just let's, let's take a leap of faith. Somehow they always step on to firm ground. They never make a, a leap of faith that just leads them to fall, you know, a hundred feet down to their deaths. So I guess it's a good fortunate that they are, you know, they got that plot, little bit of plot armor. Um, but it turns out, you know, they let it go, and then the debris constructs itself into some kind of orb of light or something like that. I suspect this is the UFOs that all these people, you know, that are reporting, you know, UFOs in the military. I, I think it's this ball, this ball of light. I think I found the alien. Hey. Um, but the ball of light and it mesmerizes everybody and flies away. Uh, it's, which makes me wonder what the hell is the point of this whole episode? Why did it do what it did? Um, it's, it's very strange to me. I, I don't know. Um, but that, that all happens and, you know, everyone's mesmerized. It's all good. Everyone's fine afterwards. And, at the end of it, uh, you know, while this is going on, in the midst of all this chaos and panic and whatever you want to call it with this debris event, um, we have the influx agent that um, he affects his, you know, he affects his um, his escape, kills a guard, uh, kidnaps kidnaps a doctor, zaps himself with a bunch of juice and teleports away, just as he had planned. So this whole thing was this is all a setup apparently by influx, and they also know that. Uh, George Jones, uh, he finds the bit of debris he was looking for. And so now we have George Jones telling Finola that he has found the debris. Influx knows he's found the debris. And 
now Brian is fully on board. He's he believes he's a believer in the debris, and you know it's all it's all leading to one conclusion. What the hell is this piece of debris? What is it that they're looking for, and how does it have anything to do with all the stuff that happened in this season? And how does it bring to a close or widen the conflict between Orbital and Influx? We're going to find out because that's on the season finale of uh, Debris coming next week. So overall, I like the episode. Um, It was a bit silly in some places. It did did a few things that I didn't quite like, but they were very brief. And besides rolling my eyes at it, I kept moving along because even though it did move at a little bit of a slow pace, there were some very fun and interesting things happening in this episode and it got the ball you know further down the field and it's clear uh they're setting up for the final conflict of the season finale so overall i think you should watch it and um it's it was good it's a good time so what do you guys think about this episode and what did you think about my review why don't you get down in the comments and let me know what you think about it and of course you can always hit me up super not funny show at gmail.com or at super not funny s1 on twitter and we can chop it up Let's, uh, let's speculate about this final episode. What are they going to do with this? Uh, or how are they going to set up season two? Because this can't be over after this one season. I don't believe it. Um, also, hey, are you a member of the Super Not Funny Show family? What? You're not? Well, hey, get down there. Hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell to let you know when we drop new content. And we do that every week. New reviews, new reactions, and anything else that floats our pop culture boat. Like the super not funny show supercast uh where me and my buddy lottie we sit and talk about superhero things that go on in other non-comic book mediums uh it's a real good time i hope you can join us there all right all you fabric and the fleshbacks thanks once again for joining me come back next week as we review the season finale of debris until then i've been molde poupe your resident fabricant and comrade extraordinaire on all things pop culture And I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace.